in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, in the name of He who gave us inner conscience and outer guidance in order for us to reach Him. Hello and welcome to another episode of Branches of Light on Sahara TV. Today we will begin to discuss the life of Imam Mahdi, our 12th Imam alayhi salam. Now when we mention the name of our 12th Imam, we feel are particularly um, close to this holy Imam because he is the Imam of our time and he is in fact still alive. According to the ayah in um, the Quran, every person will be raised in the day of judgment with uh, his or her Imam. Um, I hope that we are tr his true followers and that we will be raised uh, with him. Um, we have here with us our uh, honorable guest speaker, Brother Shafiq Huda. Brother Shafiq uh, is, um, has uh, studied uh, in Rome in uh, the year 88 and 89. Most of his uh, studies have been in Kitchener in uh, Canada, and uh, he's the director of the Islamic Humanitarian Services. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and... Uh, alaikum salam. Thank you very much. Now, Brother, can you start by uh, telling us about um, the family of uh, the Holy Imam? A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. All praise belongs to Allah. May his blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad and the purified descendants of Prophet Muhammad. The Imam, the 12th Imam, is the child, the son of the 11th Imam, Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam. And the descendant, descent of Imam, the 12th Imam, goes right back to the Holy Prophet of Islam. So he is the descendant of the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, through his beloved daughter Fatima Zahra alayhi, alayhi salam. And the, the mother of the Imam was, according to a number of the historical narrations that we have, she was a Roman princess who was from the uh, descendants of Simon, uh, Hazrat Shimon, one of the disciples of Prophet Jesus, Prophet Isa alayhi salam. So the lineage of the Imam is a very pure lineage, a very noble lineage. Of course, going to the Prophet um, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his father's side and uh, to Prophet Isa, a disciple of, of um, Prophet Jesus alayhi salam uh, through his mother's side. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now watch uh, a report together. Now, this report was uh, prepared in uh, Toronto, and we asked uh, some of our brothers and sisters in Islam uh, to give their opinions about the Holy Imam. Let's watch it together. Do you think his coming is anytime soon? It's tough to tell because, I mean, a lot of the signs, like Qasim had mentioned, a lot of the signs that um, the Prophet has proclaimed with the coming of the 12th Imam, some of them are actually starting to take place. Like, for example, with uh, recently in the news, uh, apparently Mars, the planet Mars changed its orbit. And now on that planet, the sun is rising from the west and setting in the east. And scientists have now said that in the future, it is going to be possible for the Earth where our orbit will suddenly change and the sun will rise from the west and they'll set from the east which is exactly what the prophet had said hundreds and hundreds of years ago so different changes are happening now and it it yeah it it, it could be happening soon but you know what? it's it really is very hard to tell Imam Mahdi is the 12th Imam the last Imam there are many rumors to where he was lots of people claimed to have been spot claimed to spot him in Hajj and everywhere and some people say that he is in the Bermuda Triangle but these are all theories so we cannot prove them one way so Hazrat Mahdi said that when he comes back, there will be 313 people in his army, the same amount as there were in the Prophet's army in the Battle of Badr. So for us to be part of this 313, we shall be good practicing Muslims, and we should not only be spiritual in the prayer sense, but we should practice it, we should promote it. Do Amr bil Maruf and Nahi al-Munkar, and inshallah we will be in the army of Hazrat Mahdi. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us. Uh, now, uh, Brother Shafiq, uh, the Holy Imam went into occultation or ghaybat shortly after being born or um, a couple of years after being born. And this was due to the conditions of the time of his birth. Can you explain a bit about that? The conditions surrounding the birth of the Imam were very, very difficult as one can appreciate. 
And in history, we find different kinds of parallels of, of examples of people, uh, noble people, chosen ones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, being given birth in very, very difficult um, circumstances. One of the examples that our scholars um, trace back to when they discuss the 12th Imam's birth is that of, for example, Prophet Musa, Hazrat Moses, uh, alayhi salam, uh, whereby Firon was told that there was going to be somebody who will be born in this particular year who will overthrow the, the pharaohs of the time, the Firon of the time. And so he was very worried and he gave an order for every male child born to the Bani Israel to be killed. Yet, nonetheless, Hazrat Musa, Prophet Musa was born and he was actually brought up right in the household of Firon. A similar parallel is drawn to the 12th Imam's time in which the Abbasi Khilafat uh, was told had been uh, uh, the in in instances or the hadith foreshadowing the 12th Imam was already talked about by the earlier Imams and by the Prophet himself. And so they were very worried about it and they had us actually given an order uh, for any child that was born in the house of Imam Hassan Askari to be killed. One of the things that you will find when you see Islamic history is that up until uh, the seventh Imam's time, the Imam had numerous children. Um, after the, the eighth Imam's time and onwards, we find this is not the case. One of the reasons is that the imprisonment of the Imam was significantly different in the time of the eighth Imam, ninth Imam, and, and onwards. Uh, while the danger or the threat to the government of the day in the earlier Imams was that they may try to overthrow the, the, the Khilafat or the Caliphate, um, and as a result, the Imam was not never allowed, the earlier Imams were never allowed free access um, to the followers, or the followers ne were never allowed free access to the Imam. However, after the 10th Imam's time, uh, the government of the day actually prevented the Imam from even meeting not only his followers, but even from meeting his family members, thus reducing the chance or the opportunity of there being um, the 12th Imam being born. And this was something that was very, very high on the mind of the uh, Abbasis, the kings of the day, because they had been told that the 12th one of the uh, Prophet's uh, lineage or the successors will be the one who will bring about justice, equality, and through truth uh, throughout the world. So as a result, there was a, a certain degree of fear on the part of the government. And as a result, they were trying to make every effort possible to prevent the birth. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that wallahu khairul makirin. Allah is the best of planners, and as a result, on the uh, 15th of Shaban, um, in the early hours of the morning, in the year 255 Hijri, uh, after the migration of the Prophet, the Imam was born uh, to Lady Nargis Khatun. Uh, may Allah's blessing and peace be upon her. And so that was just an idea of, of the circumstances that were surrounding the birth of the Imam. And uh, in fact, even uh, the mother of the 12th Imam, up until the time that she actually delivered the uh, the imam, until the actual delivery of the uh, imam, she herself was not experiencing any of the pains or the pangs of, of pregnancy or expecting a child. Um, so much so that she herself was quite confused at the time of the birth of the imam in the early hours of, the, of that morning. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, that was so uh, interesting. Um, if uh, Stay with us now. We're going to watch another report together. Well, uh, people say that Imam Zamana is coming soon. I wish it's true, but we really don't know. Because as what we learn, what we hear from our alims and Malwis, it's uh, the signs are there. Of course, the signs are there. But we don't know. Of course, we'd be very, very happy if our Imam comes. But it's going to be some time, and it's not going to be easy. It's not going ready? to. Yes, we are ready. But we have to be good Muslims. That's the biggest thing. We have to sacrifice and we have to really become one of uh, a pious followers of the Imam in order to, re in fact, be, in fact, to follow him. Uh, I wish he comes quick. Then uh, ready for him? we have to be ready for him. Uh, but only Allah knows when he comes. But Imam Zamana is uh, is our hope, and then. Uh, we, every time we think of any calamity or anything, we have to think of Imam Zamana, that uh, uh, he is coming. Things which are difficult will, uh, will not be difficult any longer once he comes.
So we have to have hope and that the waiting is a hope which will be, be beneficial for all of us. Thank you for the report. Um, and now, Brother Shafiq, we know that um, the Prophet himself and the 12 Imams had always told the followers that there would be 12 Imams. So that the number 12 was uh, stated. Do we have any um, history that uh, there was specification and foreshadowing uh, about Imam Mahdi in particular? Yes, we have um, a number of um, uh, narrations to that effect. And in fact, there's been a very, very beautiful book um, written by Hazrat Ayatollah Safi Gulbegani, which is called Muntakhab al Athar fi Imam Thani Ashar, um, which contains a lot of the uh, riwayat, the narrations, the hadith. Um, the foreshadowing of all the earlier uh, Imams, including the Prophet of Islam himself. And he also gives a number of Ahl Sunnah sources um, which point to not only the number 12 that the Prophet had mentioned that there will be 12 legitimate or 12 authentic um, successors to me, but also um, at pointing to Imam Mahdi, pointing to the, uh, the, the, the 12th Imam or pointing to the Qayyim. A number of um, titles have been used. Um, to, to speak about Imam Mahdi, Ajallahu uh, Ta'ala, the Huru, one of which is the Mahdi, which means the rightly guided one. Another one is the Qa'im. Uh, the Quran's allusion to the Imam is Baqiyatullah, the one who will remain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this book, there's a lot of narrations at that point to that. So we are quite comfortable and there's a number of uh, authenticity, authentic hadith from not only the Shia sources, but from the Sunni sources as well that talk about the, uh, the Mahdi, the one who will come and, and set up the rule uh, of Allah on this earth. And so the um, evidence is, is, is overwhelming. So we've got uh, countless hadith. Um, some have narrated in the, in the number of 10,000 that point to or deal with directly or indirectly with Imam Mahdi. So there's a lot of a lot of foreshadowing, a lot of information that our Imams um, have given us, including the Holy Prophet uh, وسلم, himself as well. So we have no, no doubt whatsoever. Um, perhaps as we're discussing it, it may also come up that even the Ahl Sunnah believe in uh, Imam Mahdi. They talk about the Mahdi on numerous occasions. And perhaps I can um, explain that. Uh, at an, at an yes, little. because um some do believe that, especially Shias, they believe that it's only um, the Shias that uh, it's our belief that uh, the Imam Mahdi will yes. come and the Ahlat Tasannun do not believe in that. Now, having mentioned that, the Prophet uh, has told Absolutely. the people that there would be um, the Mahdi. So uh, the Ahlat Tasannun and all sects of uh, Islam unanimously believe in the Mahdi, alayhi salam, but it's just the different forms and um, they have different beliefs. So what's the similarities and what are the differences in their beliefs about the Imam? The surprising thing is that uh, it's very interesting to note, uh, even through my own research and readings, because I, I take a keen interest on, on the 12th Imam, inshallah, we pray that the Imam will include us all in his, in his army, inshallah, right till the end. Um, but I take a keen interest in seeing what the other Muslims are, are saying or writing about Imam Mahdi, ajallah. And one of the things that I found very fascinating was the fact that almost all of the narrations that, that talk about Imam Mahdi, what will happen when he returns, uh, the coming of Dajjal, Yajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog, um, what will happen in Prophet Isa reciting Salat, uh, Namaz, uh, Jamaat behind him. All of these things are almost identical from what I have read with the Shia sources as well as from what I have seen in the uh, Ahl Sunnah, uh, the, the Sunni sources. The only difference and the only significant difference that I have found between the two schools of thought is the fact that the Shias believe that he is already here, he is born in the world, that he is an occultation. Um, and the Ahl Sunnah, the, our Sunni brothers, they believe that he will be born. Um, although Sahih Bukhari actually narrates um, a hadith from the Holy Prophet that Al Mahdi min itrati min wulad al Fatimiyya, that the Mahdi is from my children from amongst the descendants of Fatima. The Prophet has been quoted as saying that. So um, all of these point to the fact that all Muslims, almost all the Muslims that I have read across, come across, 
have believed in it or believe in, in the Imam. The only difference, as I mentioned, is that we believe that he's already here and they believe that he will be, uh, will be born. Now, Sunnis don't believe in Sayyid and uh, I think it's mainly Shias that believe in Sayyid. So how do they believe that he's going to be born from the family of the, pro uh, the, you know, the Prophet when they, they don't, in fact, believe in um, Sayyid? In actuality, they have this concept of Sayyid, number one. Um, yes, they, they do believe that the, the only original or birth daughter to the Holy Prophet was Hazrat Fatima Zahra. And obviously, the, the children of Hazrat Zahra, uh, even amongst the, the Ahl Sunnah, in some of their uh, references, are referred to as Yabna Rasulullah. Some of the Imams are actually called Yabna Rasulullah, uh, which, of course, for us Shias, it's not a big deal, it's no, nothing surprising. But for the Sunnis, it is a very surprising matter to see that even amongst their scholars, there was a great deal of respect, and they recognized these, the Imma, the Imams, as uh, grandchildren or descendants of the, of the Prophet. So the concept of Sayyid, the concept of somebody from the uh, family of the Prophet is there. In some books, they don't, they don't refer to the word Sayyid, they refer to the word Sharif, for example. This also symbolizes um, that he is a descendant of the, the Prophet. There are a number of, uh, again, prominent Sunni ulama who are Sayyids. For whatever reason, they accepted th that school of thought or they were fell into that school of thought uh, as opposed to the Ahl al-Shia. Right. Now, uh, again, discussing uh, someone that's going to be coming, uh, the, the Jews and the Christians. Now, the Christians believe that uh, Jesus will be coming back and the Jews, in fact, believe and are waiting for Messiah. Uh, the Messiah to come back. And, in fact, in I've read that in Hinduism and in, um, you know, the uh, Zoroastrian and in many religions, they are all waiting for that common... Um, now, they call him different names, yeah. but they are waiting for the Messiah to come and um, to create that utopia in the world, yeah. yes. inshallah. One of the things, if I may comment on that, uh, uh, that, that is very interesting uh, is that in, in some cases, some writers have actually used that as a point that, well, Islam is, um, has taken things or borrowed things from other faiths, other religions, and has made up something. This is what, what, what some scholars have actually written, non-Muslim scholars. In actuality, when you look at it from the Islamic perspective, it, it makes perfect sense and it makes very, very um, cohesive perfectness because what Islam believes is that Islam is not a new religion. It is a continuation of the message of, of uh, going right back to Adam, a continuation of the message of Noah, of Abraham, of Moses, of Jesus, of, of all of the all of the prophets that came before, peace be upon them all. So when we find similarities, um, one can look at it two ways. One is that Islam took it from these other faiths and made up its own religion, which is obviously, according to us, the incorrect view. Or the second view is that we see this as a systematic approach that the previous messengers previous prophets had given in light of, of um, what was transpiring. So we believe that Allah had decreed that inshallah, God willing, one day there will be justice throughout the earth, one day there will be utopia throughout the, the, the universe, not only just the world. And that, that state or that station of perfectness is something that all look forward to because their previous prophets, Prophet Jesus told his community, Prophet Moses or Musa alayhi salam told his community that, Prophet Ibrahim had told his people that as well. And um, some of the common commentators of the Holy Qur'an, the Qur'an Majid, have pointed this to meaning or pointing this towards the fact that to do intadhar, to do to await, is something that even the prophets had done. And uh, one of the foundations of the Shia school of thought presently in this era of the Imam's occultation is to do intadhar, to wait for the Imam. Brother Shafiq, thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, we have come to the end of today's program. Inshallah, we will discuss uh, the life and the occultation of Imam Mahdi in our next session. And thank you to the viewers for um, staying with us. Uh, we pray to God that he guides us on the right path and that he hastens the coming of our 12th Imam, Imam Mahdi, alayhi salam. And may God be with you and goodbye.